everybody. This is Adam Gusso uh, for Modern Blues Harmonica on the campus of the uh, University of Mississippi. It is a rainy Sunday in late December. And um, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to go through some of the questions that I got when I asked folks at the Modern Blues Harmonica Facebook page um, to email me and uh, tell me what they thought still needed to be done in the world of online blues harmonica instruction. And somebody wrote very interesting. It's Tony Stevens, actually. He's been around for a while. And he said, should you pucker holes one, two, and three, and then tongue block four on up? I cannot get one and two tongue blocked. I can do a little with three. Is there a rule on this? If, if, if this is not good for a video, then just a reply here will do. So for those of you who are just beginners and you, you got your first harmonica and you're, you're saying, oh my God, um, tongue block and what pucker, what? Okay, I, I can't go into all that, but I'll, I'll do a little bit of that. And mostly this is going to be oriented towards somebody for whom that is a real thing, that question. So let's actually, let's give you the 60 second introduction to puckering versus tongue block, and then it'll become more apparent what's going on. So puckering is the way that I teach all beginners to play. And by the way, I have a website, Modern Blues Harmonica. Just Google that and beginners, and you'll find that page. I've got a lot of videos here on YouTube. Puckering. So puckering is the standard. It is narrowing your lips down to one note. We make a big, big fat lips, uh, embouchure, uh, I'm not going to show you how to do it, I'm just going to tell you what it is. I have other videos that show you how to do it. Easy to find, beginner videos. How to make single notes. Gusso, how to make single notes. That's lip pursing. And you can do a lot of great harmonica playing lip pursing. All of what I'm going to play right now is lip pursed. So it sounds like good, great blues harmonica. And if you like to overblow, I tend to think pursing is far superior. Except for sloppy playing, but you can do a lot lip pursing. But what you can't do lip pursing is what I'm going to do now. Every single thing I played there was tongue blocked. You can do octaves tongue blocked. And you can't do them lip pursed, just can't. Now there's a lot of things you can do lip pursed. Some things you can do lip pursed that are almost impossible tongue blocked. There are many things that you can do tongue blocked, you just can't even begin to think about doing lip pursed. When I say tongue blocked, I mean I put my tongue against a piece of wood, or because I have a marine band harp. Kind of, so I, my mouth is wide, my tongue is pushing straight forward. Ugh, weird. But it lets you do what it calls splits, and I can get hole one and hole four, for example, and I'm sort of blocking out holes two and three by putting my tongue on the wood. So if you're brand new to harmonica, this is your your mind is already blown. You're just sitting there going, like, what? You know. But that's what we do. So that when you hear that big sound. So what happens on the low note of the harmonica? The, the tongue blocking is something that helps you kind of add a lot of extra notes on the upper end, kind of big stuff. What about if I just want to play one note? If I don't care about playing multiple notes the way the tongue blocking lets me play. Suppose I just want to play one note. Suppose I just want to play the four draw. Well, it's interesting. Now, if you lip purse four draw, you count up one, two, three, four, and you do that. But tongue blockers do that by blocking, by putting their tongue on the harp and covering holes one, two, three. They can get a counter rhythm if they want by sort of getting a little chuggy kind of thing by lifting their tongue slightly. Or they can just keep the, the, everything on the harp. Now that's tongue blocked. This is lip purse. This is tongue blocked. Can you tell the difference? Well, probably you can because I'm not as good playing lip, uh, playing tongue blocked bends, which is what I was doing there. I'm just not that good, so I almost never do it. I occasionally do, but I almost never do, and and um, only in rare circumstances. And that's sort of what this person was asking about. But they were specifically saying, 
What about when you go even further down? Like, I want to play the three draw. Well, if I was lip pursed, I'd go one, two, three. That's all lip pursed, and I'm bending and pulling the note down. But what about, do I, could I put my tongue on the one and two and do all that bending while I'm tongue blocking? Absolutely can. Can I? I'm not very good at it. It's not really my way of playing. So I can do it, but it doesn't feel comfortable to me. But to people who do it, it feels like the one right way. And they'll, they'll make all kinds of arguments why it's actually better to do it that way. You have a bigger sound. I don't know. I think to some extent it's what, you've, what feels right to you. Um, that was tongue blocked. I put my tongue. So I, what I did was I laid my tongue. I may have switched it sideways and laid it on the one and two hole. And so that would be a place where I would tongue block. If I want to get a counter rhythm, so that's where you want to tongue block if you want a counter rhythm, right? As opposed to if I lip person try to do exactly the same thing. Lip pursed. Tongue blocked. Now my teacher, Nat Riddles, tongue blocked. I didn't know that. That's interesting. And so there were things he used to do, like... Now I didn't know that he was actually laying his tongue on the piece of wood to the left of hole number one and also covering hole one, and he was doing that he was playing the two draw that way. And you might try to do that if you if you you might try to do that. And of course, what I'm doing is I'm then kind of kicking sideways off the three draw and getting a really nice kind of uh, 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 syncopated rhythm. That's one reason to tongue block. And when Nat would do that, I would just, it would kill me and I'd just go, wow. But I didn't know he was tongue blocking that. I knew he was tongue blocking the octaves. He showed me how to do that, but I didn't know he was... So I evolved my own lip pursed way of getting the same sound. So instead of tongue blocking, I went like this. Now, I, what I can hear is I like the two draw sound at least as well doing it that way, which is lip pursed where I'm actually kind of alternating lip pursed with a, a little counter rhythm. And I'm not going to teach you that today. I've taught that elsewhere, but I just want you to know it's there. I don't like, mm, I don't like my sound on the three draw kick quite as much that way, interestingly enough, as I do like the tongue block. So tongue block. And mine, lip pursed. Doesn't have quite the... That's better than... But maybe if I practice that... That's... Can you tell? Was that lip burst or tongue blocked? I'm gonna hide it all. <laughs> well, you can tell. The first two were tongue blocked. The third was lip pursed. All right. Hold on. Anyway, I hope that enlightened you a little bit. It showed you a few of the techniques that we use, and it showed you that it's a real issue whether you tongue block those low notes or lip purse those low notes. Some people, for example, the two draw. Do you, do you, do you put your tongue on the harp and cover the wood and the one hole? Or do you just lip purse it and use my mystery technique? Well, that's your choice. Anyway, I'll see you down the road next time. Bye-bye.